Three, three, shit. A lot of niggas out here hating. You know, ain't trying to see niggas make it. I'm finna prosper in any situation, though. I've been drinking for a long time now, I'm ready, nigga. I'm just trying to go fast like a letty, nigga. I'm just trying to be heard up like a yeti, nigga. Bunning OG with them 3 threes getting daddy, nigga. I've been drinking for a long time now, I'm ready, nigga. I'm just trying to go fast like a letty, nigga. I'm just trying to be heard up like a yeti, nigga. Bunning OG with them 3 threes getting daddy, nigga. Hey, folks, you reality gurus. The show we take common sense to approach the issues through complex conversation. You know I'm your host, T. Cleave, and check this out, folks. Folks, we back here again with some more of this midnight shit, man. I got my man Aye, returning guest, May, and first time guest, my brother just here. Just say what's up, chat, May. How y'all doing this evening? Hey man, you know what? Once again, hey man, you know what? Once again, as always, happy in, to be indeed, here. Indeed, indeed, y'all say what's up with you, you, champ? How you feeling this morning, man? Well, uh, not this morning, this evening, man. Welcome to Reality Guru. Oh, thank you for having me, my brother. I'm feeling awesome. On top of the world, man, glorious, <laughs> as X-Clan would once say. And of course, we got my boy, Ye. So listen, folks, let's go ahead and get right in it with y'all see the title, Hip Hop, Then and Now. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit, man. Um, let's go ahead and first, let's just clear some things up, man. Uh, everybody here on this panel is over 35 or uh, 30, 35 years old, around 35 years old. We clear with that because I want to make sure I'm not talking to anybody who's outside of that generation because, uh, you know, we're going to get into some things. And only some brothers that are close to that age are probably going to understand what I'm talking about. So we cool. Everybody here above the age 35 or close to it? Well, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm getting close to it, you know what I mean, but, uh, yeah. J, J, you, 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 you just said, y'all, y'all old school, man, look, 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 me and Jermaine, we like right smack in the middle, we not quite new school, we not old school, we like All right, well, listen, hopefully you guys are old souls, you know what I'm saying, so you guys can relate, because me and just see are probably going to be able to, you know, mesh well, but anyway, folks, hip-hop then and now, let's get ahead and think about some things real quick, man, um, I come from an era of hip hop that you know they dubbed the golden age i don't know if i'm i'm too cool with that that label because when you think about nowadays some of these artists are making a lot more money than you know cats were making back in the day so when you want to use the term golden age you know i'm not sure if you want to talk about the era of hip hop where um you know you couldn't throw a stone without fire, without without hitting the mc that could give you a quick 16 bars that's the that's the era that i came from um and I just think that over the years, man, we've allowed for the mainstream and culture vultures and, you know, you know, the idea of money compensation to destroy the integrity of hip hop. So the question is, man, is hip hop a culture or is this shit just a genre? Um, fellas, man, I got yay. I got Jasir. I got main. One of you gentlemen, go ahead and, and, and open up this conversation with me, man. We need to start talking about this hip hop, whether it's culture, whether it's the genre, whether the golden age that, you know, the 90s and, and, and the, the 80s and the early 90s <laughs> produced. Um, how does that measure up against the shit that we're hearing now, man? Who want to go first, man? Man, y'all see it. Yeah. Which one of y'all want to go ahead and grab this torch and go ahead and get this conversation started? Hey, I, I, I keep I keep it short and simple. Mm. I don't even know anymore. I thought for sure it was a culture. I thought we was doing it for the culture, but I don't even know anymore because it's all over the place. There's no structure. So maybe some brilliant minds like us need to bring structure back to it to, to, to recreate. Yeah, culture. well, I mean, I as, as far me. as structure is concerned, that's interesting. Um, that's an interesting, you know, way to open this conversation up because, um, uh, right now, man, you, you, there isn't anything. But let's talk about the way, where where it started. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you start thinking about some of the, uh, uh, you know, some of the pioneers, Ben Bada, Grandmaster Cash, Flash, these guys from back in those days, um, and you know, KRS One, and then you know, the integrity of hip hop, the fact that you wasn't you 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 couldn't jump into one of these ciphers unless you had something to say. Um, it wasn't about pill popping. It wasn't about none of the nonsense. You know, you know, we had our our cats and our and our uh, 
and that in that golden era generation that was talking about a little bit of nonsense but for the most part man everybody has some kind of a message man and it definitely definitely came down to bars so um you know uh, help me man y'all see it man like how y'all feeling about the situation with hip-hop the state of it now can somebody answer this quick question is it a culture or is it a genre man answer that question for me brother I'm going to have to go ahead and say it is definitely a culture. You know, anytime you have a social institution, some form of art by a group of people, a nation, mm. by definition, that's culture. Okay. And um, whether we all agree that customs are the same, we could take any given ethnicity. When we talk culture, everybody mm. don't do everything the same. There's typical guidelines. You know, for instance, uh, if you talk, you know, Mexican culture, they may say they make a burrito a certain way. Or if you say Salvadorian, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I knew, I knew he you make it a good that. point, though. Uh, they, they may do uh, soap. It. So my, my point is, is that they're the same mm -hmm. people with different culture. So I think hip hop is definitely a culture. I mean, it's our art. And, you know, as the old saying goes, art imitates life. You know what I mean? And, and you do see what I think is evolution more so than mm. anything else. It's just an evolution of thought. It's just an evolution of things changing. As you mentioned before, um, we got a lot of money on the line now. Cass wasn't making the type of money that they're making now. 20 years ago. It wasn't even heard of, you know, but guess what? That's in everything. Boxing, acting, you you can go down the list. The money's different. So, because the money is there, we've lost, as I agree with you, we've lost control of it. When they see the potential of money, these vultures came in and grabbed it and said, oh, no, no, no. We got to control that because Here's an avenue for these people to get rich. And I think um, we've never really had full control. Even back in the day, what did we have to do? It's what not. was the goal? To get signed. Well, sign to who? Sign to who? Sign to a major. Who owns a major? Who has a major? So the goal even back then, as far as you want to take it, you know, was to uh, uh, essentially get signed to a record mm -hmm. label that was going to own you. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that was the goal? That's what mm -hmm. we wanted. Like, you know, because they were going to cut a check and we were going to be set apart or set above from our peers, you know. And we got to remember when this culture started. Mm -hmm. This culture started in the 70s, you know, mm -hmm. uh, after the revolutionary 60s. You know, black people didn't have much. You know, then is when we experienced right. extreme poverty, extreme right. poverty and devastation. You know, we were coming under the Black Panther movement, going into what? Mm. The Crip and Blood era, then the crack cocaine, all around. And I think the culture itself is geographical because the culture on the West Coast was a mm. lot different than the culture on the East Coast. I got to give it to the East Coast, though, on creating it. But then I feel like there was a rebirth on the West Coast because our stories and our lifestyles were so different it made our music different and it was relatable to a certain group if you think about all the people that touched you that made you feel something they came from la because it was a culture you know that said man you know that lifestyle that he living i've never even thought about that or seen that and you like, man, I, they, do they really live like that out there? Are they really killing each other over this color and all this stuff? All these questions that came about. So I think when you heard it on the song, it was like, man, uh, Ice Cube talking about, you know, a car that bounced and girls and mm -hmm. all this this whole different culture. And it's how, how, how can mm -hmm. you not call it a culture? I mean, it's literally. All right. So let, the let me ask this follow up. And so how do you feel about the evolution of it you mentioned evolution how do you feel about the direction that hip-hop is going in uh, now we mentioned about how uh the, the the mission before was to go ahead and get signed by a major um ultimately the majors was controlled by you know you know 
whites in a corporation and everything. But nowadays, with you know the institution of your YouTube and your SoundCloud and your uh, you know where where you can go ahead Instagram, you know, go ahead and, and do your independent stuff. Uh, we kind of see a lot of artists out here, if you want to use the term artists, um, are actually putting their their uh, their brand of entertainment. I don't want to call it all music, but put their brand of entertainment out and, you know, they make millions of dollars. So how do you feel about the direction that hip hop is going in now? I, I think I think I think it evolved. Not that mm-hmm. it's going to. It already did. But don't mistake that because. Although we evolved, as much as it changed, it stayed the same. You could take E-40's formula for out the trunk, the, the DJ Quick formula, and the uh, 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 Too Short formula out the trunk, you know, selling CDs locally. That's no different than what Nipsey was talking about, and it's no different than what Nipsey did. It's the same thing. You know, nobody's reinventing the wheel here. You know, Master P was the first one to kind of get a good deal, per se, and, and, and really make money off his album sales and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That was the transition right there. But you, what you know that? most mm-hmm. people would consider that old school or, you know, mid-90s rap. So mm-hmm. it evolved then, you know, and people started getting, what, smarter, more business savvy and wait a minute. I want to, I want the masters to my music, but guess what? We can go to Michael Jackson, Prince, and other people who also had Sam Cooke, other people, you can go any, anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to go throughout history, it stays the same, it's just the right people around to inform you and say, hey, this is your business, essentially, you should be making the bulk of the money, it's just, we coming from nothing, it's like college, football, We'll play for free right. just to right. try to get to okay. the NFL. So then, no. So no, no. no. I'm gonna let you finish. Finish your last thought. No. So, so we'll play in college for no money, just for a chance to get get to the NFL, where the college is is the corporation or the label. They're making concession money. They're selling out eighty thousand eighty thousand seat stadiums. You name it, selling your jersey, selling your number, selling all this stuff, making millions and millions right, of dollars, right. what you get none of. You know, so so essentially, you know, that but now that's the you know that but now we getting smarter and we saying, wait a minute, we want a piece of what what we produce, we want the outcome of that. We want the money from it. so now you see people saying Forget the middleman. You know, cut out the middleman. Actually, that's exactly what Nipsey was saying. Cut out the middleman, and right. now it's consumer direct because right. now we have the outlets to do that. We have Instagram. We have all these tools now, so well, we don't even need to include them anymore. But they're still finding ways to control that, control app, control. You know, right. we still got to go through their companies to directly sell our product. But I think the evolution is brilliant. Um, these young guys are making more money. Mm. They're becoming more business savvy, and I think it's hip hop okay. in the culture. Josh so, here. so you hear, you, know, uh, you hear what's going on so far. Uh, uh, May has a couple things he put out there. Um, let's start with you first. Let me ask you this question: as far as hip hop being a culture or a genre, where do you stand on that? Um, as far as that question is concerned, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I don't see it as a culture for a few reasons. First, I want to go to the elements of hip hop. You know, I want to start with that, like the whole breaking, graffiti, the DJ, the MC, and then they got the B-boy or the knowledge itself as the interchangeable fifth piece. When you look at hip hop today, where do you see that? Yeah. Any of it besides the rapper. But you don't have MCs no more. You have a handful of MCs, but you got a right. bunch of rappers. Now, that was created, genuinely created back in the day. But over the years, like my man was talking about, a lot of what my man was just talking about was revolving around the money. But that's not one of the elements. Because, you know, if you add money to the, to the table, you take away from the genu- genuineness of the art or the craft. Because when money comes into place, your culture mm. is gone. You're not going to control it no more. Because mm. you don't have the money in the first mm. place. Now, that's a, that's, 
Go ahead, go ahead, brother. So, so when I look at it, so when I look at it as far as today and the culture itself, it's trash. I'm just no, it's trash. I'm gonna just keep it one hundred. It's trash across the board. It's trash because it's, it's about chasing the money. You forgot about the element in the beginning that brought the, the community together. It was for a purpose. Yeah. It has no purpose no more. Only purpose. So okay, my f- to make the money. <clears throat> No, no. So my follow, uh, I'll let you. Um, I ask this follow up and then let you continue. Um, so, so as far as the evolution is concerned, you're not even. Is there anything about where hip hop is going, um, in the last say twenty years, um, that you do um, think is a good is a good thing? Um, um, I mean, as far as the artists go, I mean, as far as the artists go, no. As far as the industry itself, like it's, this is like probably the most, the freest time in history of music history, period. Not with just hip hop, where you can just do so much and so fast, with, like like he was saying, cut out the middleman. Like that's brilliant, that's great. But remember, when when hip hop started, they didn't have a middleman very much. Because mm. hip hop was hated. Mm. Nobody wanted to sign hip hop artists. So they didn't really have all this have all this at their disposal. They had to just create that buzz, and then the white folks only came mm-hmm. in because it blew up, mm-hmm. because it was it was making money. So, but at this time right now, the thing I do see is the opportunity to do what you need to do on your own uh, without the middleman. But as far as the music goes, no, now okay, I don't, I don't like so you know, um, yeah, I, I feel all. you on that. As far as the music is concerned, you know. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff today leaves a lot to be desired. Um, but, you know, I will be honest, man. Um, you know, for me, you know, we talked in the last show about being able to relate um, since, you know, I am like to stay active in a community. Um, in order for me to be able to, rel- to relate to a generation like that, you know, I have to go ahead and listen to some of their music. Um, you know, I, I will say, you know, it's a lot more melodic than what I'm used to, um, you know, <clears throat> It prompts people to want to dance a little bit more, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, the, the, the generation we might have come from. Where we're worried about those bars. We're worried about those lyrics. We're worried about that grittiness. Um, but, you know, I asked you about do you think there's anything positive as far as the evolution is concerned? Because the one thing that I do enjoy about the evolution of hip hop is the independence. Um, you do remember that uh, there was a shift from when artists were trying to get on these majors. To where, um, you know, you had these artists out there trying to do their own thing. You had your 50 Cent out there selling his mixtapes out of his trunk. His car, Ludacris, was doing that shit in the South. And I'm pretty sure it was getting done mm-hmm. over the West Coast, too. You know, artists were out there trying to get their own stuff together. Master P, you remember how he, uh, you know, had that deal with priority for like 80% of the profits and stuff like that. So um, that shift from depending strictly on the major to now creating your talent you know getting your following on a small you know small scale and then presenting it to or having somebody come to you and 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 get the profits a little better i think that 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 was a good thing for hip-hop it allowed us to try to take some more control of you know a culture that was ours from the beginning and it kind of got tainted how you feel about that yay um, do you think that the evolution as far as the independence and the money is concerned is a positive thing uh, or was it a negative thing? Did it destroy hip hop? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the money, the money, it destroyed hip hop because there was no direction. I mean, I love the independency, but if there's no mm-hmm. direction, we got a problem. So that's why I got to say, damn, maybe we started off the wrong way. Maybe we didn't establish that structure from day one to be passed down to the new generation. This new generation just said, hey, hip hop is the new trap. It's the new way to get this money. I'm going to get this money. That's what I'm going to do. It's a legit way for me to get me and my family out of the hood. That's what I'm going to do. That's what it is. That's the best opportunity I see. And I'm going to run with it. But I think there should have been a better foundation laid down for them. There should have been better lessons taught to them. There should have been more cats around our age to teach them about the culture, about the elements, about the love and respect that we have for the culture. So if they would love and respect it the way that we did, we didn't, we didn't give them that. 
so they just so they don't. That's an interesting. That's an interesting dollars. point there, because now if we're looking down the timeline, we can actually pay attention to you know some of the things that were going on that kind of led to the deterioration of you know what you're talking about. So, um, you know, I don't know, man. We're gonna call somebody out today. Are we going to point fingers at any of these executives like the Sean Puffy Combs? Now, Puffy, he's he was he was he's my man as far as business is concerned. Um, but you remember when, you know, Puffy brought the shiny suits and all that other shit out. Right. And how the shiny suit era is what kind of changed things. It wasn't always about the lyrics. Um, now they added the lyrics with a little bit of a little bit of party, a little bit of dance, a little bit of money. Right. Are we going to start pointing some fingers at some of these moguls and start, you know, seeing what responsibility they have with destroying the integrity of hip hop? Go ahead, man. I'm listening to you. What, 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 what do we want to point the finger about? Again, listen. Jay Z said it best. Want my old mm. shit, buy my old album. Mm. Listen. Mm. Not nice. to evolve, mm. not to move forward. You know what I'm saying? They're not talking to you anymore these 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 young artists are 20 21 25 listen they're in their era you know i always argue with cats about eras you know oh well you know floyd mayweather jr not the the best he's the best of his era arguably the greatest of all time i believe that certain people you only can do what's in your time I can't do anything about slavery. I wasn't there. You, you like you, it wasn't my era. God put me in this era. You know, I only can control this era and what's going on at at this time. We got we cannot be scared to evolve. Guess what? It's the same stories. That's what made me so passionate about hearing Nip Hustle because he reminded me of a '90s rapper. The same issues he's talking about was the same thing we was talking about in the '90s. The gangs, the police, the et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it evolved. And where did it evolve for him? Intellectually and business. Those are two good things. This is not a negative. Evolution don't have to be bad. Granted, should we have done this? Shoot, it's easy to sit back and Monday morning quarterback, but guess what? Mm -hmm. We didn't have the education. Nobody was going to teach us how to acquire like you get that was trial and error it's gonna take a Diddy. it's gonna take a jay-z those are one-on-one -on -one. those are the first guys to do it give it a little time to progress and you're gonna have 10 nipsey hustles out here you're gonna you have man, man. Gonna, you know, man. here's the thing though here's the thing though black artists being exploited that that's not I knew it, it wasn't even it wasn't new in the 90s. It had been going on in the 80s, the 70s with all that R&B, with all that blues music. Sam Cook told us, you know what I'm saying? You need to get in the control of your past. You need Absolutely. to control your DLC own. Boy, I like to I like to blame. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I like to blame a lot of this on the miseducation. A lot of this on us not passing down the information and a lot of it on the effects from poverty because when you're dealing with poverty and you're like, hold up, do I want to keep this long game and be independent with it or do I want to mm. just sign and get this money real quick? If you got somebody in your ear, if you got that old head that you respect in your ear, it's like, hold up, hold up, we're going to take the long game. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about the fame, it's about the fortune. But a lot of these young dudes, even in the 90s, even in the 80s, didn't have that person in their ear. So they're just like, hold up, I'm trying to get my family up out of this. I'm trying to survive. Right. This survival oh right? yeah so so, so jolly yeah. oh, yeah, it makes sense right i mean it, it, like like the kid from right. the kid, when, 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 when you know usc or some division one school in ohio is contacting you saying i'm gonna get you out the hood we're gonna pay for your school we're gonna put you housing we're gonna do all this thing and you can go to the nfl who's gonna say no to that it's like a dangling carrot you know what i mean it's like yeah I, come on get me up out of here you know what I'm saying? But we're not saying, well, wait, I'm not going to get none of that money that they making off me when I uh, take this team to a Pro Bowl or, you know, a national championship and they win two or three years and they're getting $15 million per game and all this stuff. I don't get none of that. No, you don't. So I understand, which is why I don't have a problem with it, because I know due to poverty and other circumstances, most people are going to say, 
well, not only do I know, they know, which is why they do it. You know, um, and, and, and it's working for them. And the and the business model was what? Do it for as long as it lasts, right. because these people are desperate. These people are hopeless. We can continue doing this until the wheels fall yeah. off, and that's what's gonna happen. But do I blame my brother? That just go ahead and say, hey, you know, I'm assigned to this label right now, or I'm awake. But guess what? We seen the evolution. I keep bringing up Nipsey because that's the greatest mm-hmm. example of it happening recently. When he didn't sign the Rick Ross, when he didn't sign the uh some of the major labels that was throwing deals at him, he he told him to hold on. He said, listen, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take it slow. Of course, I can make more money if I just hop on something. But he took, he built it himself, and you've seen the results of it all. And he eventually got where he wanted to go, and then they presented a deal because he didn't budge. They presented a deal that he liked, and he took it, and it's moving on. So guess what? That sets precedence. That sets a new business model for those coming up in the game to say, well, wait a minute. I seen Lil Bro or Big Bro Nipsey do this. Hey, yo, mate. Mate, hold on. Yo, John. Hold on, John. John, let me listen. You look. You looking like you got a few things on your mind over here, brother. Yo, John, go ahead. Weigh on what you hear, brother. Weigh in on what you hear. I don't know. Man, all this money talking is killing my ears, man. And people act like people act like when when, when hip hop started, like people had bread or something like no it's always been a broke man sport but money can't be the catalyst man money can't be the carrot thing it just can't do it man we will never have it that's why we don't control it right now that's why i say it's not a culture too it's not a culture if you don't control it. cultures have an army cultures have a navy america is a culture the culture mm. america protects america against all eyes got that not a culture corporations got security guards i mean people have guidelines and everything to their culture to protect it. Hip-hop was was created, put on a platter, and left for any vote mm, to become fixed mm, and scavenge off of. Never. I it agree with that. Protected. So now we're talking about money. Now we're talking about money, that's and that's, that's, that's where it's going to, because whoever is taking that piece of, off, the, off the plate on the table has taken it and went back to the lab and reconstructed it and put it back into our face in the form of Lil Yachty. And that's why I don't care what nobody say. It's not evolution. That's not evolution. That is somebody else. So I tell you what I tell you, John. So what I'm hearing from you then is then 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 now I need to know um sort of the same question I asked originally that may uh, answer when I was pointing fingers at certain moguls or whatever. Well, then 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 where do you where do you believe the deterioration of hip hop first began? If we if we understand that money was the issue. Take me back in history to where you think that it first began. Where did the b- deterioration of hip hop begin? Where did it happen? Honestly speaking, man, I'm from the West Coast. Honestly speaking, man, I'm from the West Coast. But I truly believe the deterioration began began with oh oh. And that's the most, mm, classic, interesting, that's interesting, the most classic album oh, to the day. Let's open, let's, John, John, let's open that up real quick. John, open that up. Open that up. Open that up. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Before he elaborates, you wouldn't take it back to NWA, John? You want to take it to the chronic? That's it. I'll take it back to NWA. But, but no, I take it to the chronic because the chronic was the most celebrated of the two. Okay. Chronic, okay. chronic set the stage for what we hear today. The chronic is the first mm. pop and molly. You know what I mean? Like that 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 thing right there led to everything you hear today. I mean, we had songs back even in the late eighties, early seventies. I mean, even Grandmaster mm-hmm. Flash and Melly Mills had white lines. Like we had we had different things, but it was a it was more diverse. But when, when Dr. Dre and them came, they closed the door on everything else. See, this okay, Ja, fin- finish that, that finish that point, Ja. After that so, project came, so are you are, are you saying that you said you huh? said you oh, yeah. said when Dr. Dre you said the chronic, you said it closed the door. That's that's the part I want you to see. Okay, pick up from there. Yeah, like when Dr. Dre comes out. Yeah, like when Dr. Dre comes out and, and the chronic hits. You got to remember, before that time period, you, you still had the 89, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92 era that was just, you know, it was dope. 
uh, Grand Puba in them, Brand Nubian, X Clan, the Tribe Called Quest, Native Tongue, um, all these groups that was just out that was spitting game and, and, and knowledge. You had, of course, Public Enemy. You had black college t shirts and sweatshirts that were popular. People were looking at different world, going to black colleges and graduating and proud of it. Okay, so, so now, so man, you hear, you hear, you hear what's going on here. Right. All right. <clears throat> Just see, is making it real clear that he feels that the deterioration of hip hop began when the chronic came out, and he specifically explained why the diversity back in the day where you have you know artists mentioned a little bit about drugs, but it was more diverse. You know, you had a lot of positive stuff, you had some negative stuff too. He's saying the chronic came along because it was more celebrated than the NWA stuff. Uh, the content, right? The content on the chronic album. It's partly responsible for the deterioration of hip hop. Talk to me. How you feel about that? How the hell you feel about that, man? That's an interesting point, man. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to totally, totally disagree. With about 100% what of what he just said. <laughs> First of all, let's get into let's it. Cook. Let's cook. I mean, two things you gotta understand when analyzing what we're talking about. One is culture. One is culture. Two is business. Okay? And if we don't understand those two things, it's going to be very, very hard for you to grasp what happened. Okay? Now, culture. What do I mean by culture? A group of people that has a social institution. Right. Something they're talking about. Okay, on a, on a consensus level, right? So the culture, the way that a group does something, right? More than two or three people, a, 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 a significant or sizable enough group that move a certain way, okay? So what he's not mentioning is that was the sign of the time. At the time the chronic came out, what were people doing? Smoking chronic. What had just no. happened before chronic? Crack. Cocaine. So, crack. That was so no. that was a time they were talking mm. about the time that they were living in, which made it so relatable, which I talk mm. about all the time. People on the West Coast in LA were driving low riders. They were experiencing these type of issues in their neighborhoods. That's exactly what they was talking about on the chronic. He didn't tell you to go smoke weed. He told you that they were smoking weed, and so the hell was everybody else. If it was so unpopular and so foreign or alien, why why did it outsell and outdo hmm. whatever he was just talking about? That's because people had already left that and transitioned into the times that they was living in. He's going back into another era. But you can talk about all these people playing oldies and whatnot, in the house with your mom cleaning up outside, people right in front of your apartment door smoking weed, sipping on the 40, sitting on the stairs, gunshots going on, police outside. So it's just mm. art imitating life. Dr. Dre didn't make chronic. We ain't got no ships or no boats shipping that up in here. This was already here. This stuff was already going on. It was just now you had a group of California kids that was talking about what was going on outside of their door. So with The Chronic, which was such a great classic album, is what I think he's not mentioning, or gangster rap, as you want to call it, you know, was just screaming at the top of their lungs. This is the culture in L.A. Like I said, that's why in the outset I said geographical, because our culture in L.A. was different than the culture in Atlanta. It was different than the culture in New York. In right. L.A., this was what was going on. You know what I mean? So um, when we when he put that album out, even people that was foreign to our culture was able to relate and say, dang, it's real out there. You know, this is what's going on in, in the colors. And, you know, back then you you got cute over colors. You know, all of that stuff was prevalent. People was game banging. And that was the situation. And that's all the things that they addressed on The Chronic. You know, women, we started to tap into social issues, the way women behave, the way men behave. It was just a host of different things. And what was it? One word, evolution. It was the evolution from, you know, 
the the 60s and the black power movement and all that thing to the transition to where I guess black started feeling I don't know not so oppressed as they once did even though it was there the conscious mind and the conscious way of thinking and all of that stuff was dissipating with you know blacks having regular jobs and living in Los Angeles so- and you know having a different racial experience all of those things accumulated to what we was at in the early so when 90s, you think about you know when you, um, i don't want to cut you but and, when you think the, about so when you think about the chronic so um are you are you justifying uh the chronic because that's just basically uh dr dre and whoever's involved that was the expression of what was going on in okay so so then josh Absolutely. so then so here we go so so now so, that's what you, that's what you was cleaning up to. That's, that's what I was cleaning up to. I was cleaning, I was riding in the car and my daddy Regal, I was in the passenger seat listening to the chronic. Like you understand what I'm saying? So so that was that's what it was. You know, every car you hear coming up the street, you know. Uh, low riders and whatnot was playing the chronic. That was the hottest album. Yo, Ja, ja I gotta be honest, Ja. You know, Classic the chronic. Album. Honestly, Ja, that was one of one of my favorite albums. Honestly, it really was. Um, but see, I I look. It's G, G, let me hold on, yeah. Do, uh, this is my point, you know. Being that it was one of my favorite albums, because you know, I I take a different approach when I think about hip hop, especially when I get into listening to the music. I don't get judgmental. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's not what I'm there for. When I get to music, I'm here for bars. I'm here for something specific. And Dr. Dre. As far as his beat making, as far as the artists that he put together for that album, shit was phenomenal. You understand what I'm saying? But again, I do understand what Jossie is saying when you start talking about the content. Outside of an individual like me that goes in, I, listen, I'm here for the music. This is just, this is creativity. That's it. Once I step away from the music, now I'm back to reality. But I understand not everybody can do that. Some, some people do look at music. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, brother. I gotta, I gotta, Please. I gotta, I gotta Go ahead. For Take a your time, man. Get into um, it. All right. So, first and foremost, before the chronic came out, I don't know how old. Mm-hmm. I don't know how old the panel is necessarily, but I know that I was about nineteen, twenty when that chronic came out, and. I know that. I just told y'all before that era, even in Los Angeles, in that era, people were trying to go to school. People that wasn't the, the whole Los Angeles wasn't low riding. The whole Los Angeles wasn't rolling around with blunts in their lips. The whole Los Angeles wasn't rolling around drinking forty ounces. That wasn't everybody. It became more popular, just like anything else. If LeBron James comes out with a new shoe, everybody's running to Foot Locker to buy it tomorrow. What are you doing? If, if, if Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre comes out with some headphones called Beat headphones, like he just reinvented headphones or something. Everybody goes and buys them. That shit was marketed to us. No, good. Sorry for cursing. That was marketed to us for us to go do intentionally, intentionally. Now, I'm not saying that The Chronic was whack. It was one of my favorite all-time albums. It was, I mean, sonically, you could not get better than that. It was dope. Don't get me wrong. But that dopeness, they used to take us back down the rabbit hole. That's what I'm saying. And what you get from that is the music that we have today. It is not called evolution. It is called the death of hip-hop as we once knew it. This new stuff is something totally new. They need to call it something else because it's not what it was intentionally made to do. And they use the chronic to do that. If you look at the if you look at hip hop history and chronology, you'll see how this thing deteriorated after that that era. Man. After they killed Tupac, then they had to really take it down their road. Then they brought the hot boys in to kill it. To just totally so take okay, it so down. here, so now, now it seems like I think you're gonna have a start having a problem with me, Jock. Because to tell you the truth, man, the, the some of those things that you're mentioning, right? I think I think mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to I don't want to kind of demonize the evolution of hip hop 
from the perspective that you're coming from because the money side right there's positive things that come with the money the independence the ownership it's irresponsible if you have individuals who are in those positions and are not doing the right things i i think maybe that's where the middle ground is going to have to be because i like the fact that there's money in hip-hop i like the fact that that you know the, the ability you know for when I think about the whole Rockefeller movement, you know, because I was I'm here on, on the East Coast. When I think about the whole Rockefeller movement with Jay Z and Dame and Biggs and them dead man, as far as the industry is concerned, like I mentioned, you know, Master P, but that was New Orleans. I, this was in New York. You understand to see this happen in New York, and you know, Jay Z didn't always put out the best brand of music as far as content is concerned. But you got to understand, man, when I think about what Maine's talking about, he keeps referencing Nipsey for a reason um, about, you know, the fact that, say, for instance, Nipsey's coming from where he came from. You know, this, you, you hear that shit in his music. Um, I hear what you're saying about the chronic, man. But I, I think I think I think you're going to have to point fingers at some individuals in the culture. I hear you mentioned in the chronic. Are you talking about uh, everybody who was on the album, or there's certain individuals behind the idea of the chronic that you want to point fingers to? Because I can't, I can't subscribe to just the money side because that takes away from the independence too. That's what my issue is, John. But uh, yeah, what you saying? Go ahead, bro. Absolutely. Now I was just saying. I mean, um, I, I hear everybody's points, but I feel like um, we're giving the white man. We're giving the dominant society a pass. We're giving them too much of a pass in this type of Well, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Too much of a pass. And, 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 and we're putting it on the child in the in this scenario, which is the rappers or whatnot. You know, if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna blame a specific album in my perspective that sparked it all, it was it was the whole NWA movement. But that was the grandfather and and, and the chronic was the child to that. Okay, so the chronic specifically, the chronic of NWA, those are, are, are a specific collection of society, but not all of society, just like Jasir said, not all of LA culture, even at that time, but a specific part of society that those in control, the corporation said, we want to pinpoint on that. Because hold up, we got to remember at that time, it was conscious. It was diverse at that time. Public enemy was the voice of the streets. When something was going on, they were speaking they, they was that voice at that time. They said, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is sparking them up. They going to tear this country up. We got to get rid of that. We got to get them to smoke this weed. We got to get them to start shooting at each other and shit. And see, that's why, and we go back a couple episodes with this when we talk about accountability, accountability. We have to start holding accountability to ourselves to say, why are we still allowing something that we have that is golden to be put in a dominant society's hands and allowing them to control it dictate it and redirect it in a direction where it benefits them and it kills and, and, and it hurt, hurts and harms us. So if we would have, you know, and I know it's easier to say in hindsight, but if we would have gained control in, in, in the beginning, if we would have gotten control of distributions, if we wouldn't have ran to these majors, if we would have kept control of it, if we would have had a, a hip hop governing body to say, well, this is okay, hold on, hold on, let me finish. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. This is okay. This is not okay. This would have kept things in order because we did not do that. This is why we're in the place that we are. And it's easy to blame the children of it all, which will be today's young artists who are ultimately just saying, hey, again, I don't want to put it back on money, but they just saying, this is what I was given. This is the opportunity I was given. This is all I know. But we got to blame the parents that came before them, the grandparents that came before them that didn't teach them okay, and show them the way. I mean, uh, to, to me, that would be no different than saying the people of slavery should have taught mm -hmm. us something. Listen, they didn't know. They didn't have resources. You had to have trial and error. You had to have growth. You had to have evolution. It took baby steps to get us where we are. How many Oprahs are there? One. How many Jay-Z's are there? One. You don't have 10 and 15 of these people. Listen. But, 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 but Jermaine, you got to always remember in each air, in every air, there were always artists that said, fuck the majors, I'm going to stay independent. But and what is that? Whoa, 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 whoa. But motherfuckers, <laughs> lack patience. 
and they want the fame. Oh, wait, 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 let me finish, let me finish. They lack, they lack patience, and they want the fame, and they say, fuck the long-term grind like an E-40 did, or like a Master P did. That's, that's like a Hold on. Huh? Like a Nipsey did, right? So in every generation of rap, there was that example. And as I noted earlier, in other forms of black music, there was an example of people that say, you know what, I want to own my masters. I want to control my destiny. But ultimately, it comes down to, do you want to take the long and hard route? That's the, that's the same You want to take the stairs or you want to take the elevator? And that's okay. But what I'm saying with that is, you essentially saying, well, let me, let me, let me blame the people who took the elevator and didn't know it was stairs. That's what that's, that's 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 what I'm trying to tell you. Like, don't listen. It's not a blame game. Just say, okay, somebody had to get in there and look around. Listen. Somebody had to just get hey, in yo. the building. Somebody. Yeah. Had to, well, it's, it's not about blame. It's about it's about it's about accountability. So no, it's no accountability at that point because they're one of ones. They're so new. They don't know. They don't, listen. You can't say, bro. The stuff that you know now, you only know it because you've seen examples and you see so many people come before you and make the mistakes. Now, you wouldn't do it if you had the opportunity, At but you didn't wake up like this. You didn't wake but up he, like but, this. But, but fellas, so hold on, fellas. Distribution company. Oh, Yay, yeah, let's, let's no, toss. No, 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 I'm going to toss no. another bone into this plate here. At the 42-minute mark, Maine just started cooking. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Because... Because <laughs> this here, here, all right, let me get into it. Because but see, here, <laughs> here's where here's where the ignorance comes into play, fellas. This is where the ignorance comes into okay. play, man. I understand as far as law enforcement is concerned, they say ignorance is no excuse for the law, right? Uh, the law, but 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 in this in this situation right here, right? What we were talking about in the Nipsey Hustle situation, yeah, about how, how, how are we going to relate to, right? How are we relating? And then you also made the argument when Lamont was um, with the, the argument about the the conscious rapper versus, you know, the gangster rapper, and why is it that the gangster rap was more infectious than the 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 uh the conscious rap? This is what we getting into. So like, all right, so let's talk about this for a minute. Also in that episode. Uh, main mention about how uh, the the history of the the, the um, uh, Bloods of the Crips the, they came from the Black Panthers and not knowing how to maneuver with the Black Panthers being killed off, right? This is how they were surviving. It's the same type of situation. So you get an artist, you get an artist, you get an artist that come out of Marcy Projects in Brooklyn, right? Well, he see before the gentrification with uh uh the Barclays Center. Way before that, when it was rats and shit over there, drugs, prostitution, violence, right? And this is what he came up in. But somehow he knew how to put these words together. Yeah. He knew how to make these, these syllables and these metaphors and these similes, right? And he was able to paint the picture of what it was that he was going through. As negative as it may be, that's the reason why these motherfuckers are gravitating to him, because that's what they see regularly. Now, okay, it may not be the greatest thing in the world, so now what happens? Jay-Z becomes 40-something, and he comes out with an album called 444. This is his evolution. This is his growth. Maybe he talked about, maybe, maybe he talked about bitches and hoes back in the 90s, but now he was talking about entrepreneurship, $25 million fucking apartments that he lost opportunities on because he didn't know about the ignorance, bro. We can't, we got to give these cats a pass a bit, you know, especially... When you start talking about where they came from, we ain't talking about college educated motherfuckers. We're talking about cats that came right off the street getting out right. the motherfucking mud and they know how to put these words together. Just see it. Just see it. Answer me this question. Now that Maine brought it out there. Can you can you not see how these individuals maybe initially they put some negative stuff out, but you know, it's what it's ignorance. What they know at the time. What they know. Come on, man. How you figure? Are you not giving nobody a pass behind that, brother? <laughs> <laughs> he want them to wake up, educated, and, and, and know the mistakes that you know these white people been making oh, for years, and get the resources and the training behind it. You know they don't. <laughs> I think the okay. Good job. Good job.
I, I think you answered it before I started talking. <laughs> no, I don't need you to tell me I answered Okay, me, ask me okay. I got this, homie. Let me do this. All right. Um, um, when it comes to giving passes, when it come to giving passes again, I don't want this. I don't want my statement to get misconstrued and, and, and taken and twisted and turned in the wrong direction. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, yeah, I uh, just that, lost your feed me? for a minute. As soon as it comes back, I'll make sure if everything's looking good. Folks, we here. Hip hop then and now. We got Jasia, I Ye and Maine. We're here. Uh really get deep. Uh Jasia is getting ready to explain um, you know, as far as the whole idea of giving some of these artists a pass from, you know, yesteryear, uh, from some of the potentially negative stuff that they put out there and you know how that contributed to the damage and the integrity of hip hop. But go ahead, Jasia. Go ahead and uh, uh, finish that up. Um, can I give him a pass? Um, I mean, can I give him a pass? Um, I mean, when you're young, you young, you do not know no better. We all go through that. I got two baby mm. mamas. I wish I can go back and change mm. the hands of times right now. You know what I mean? When you're young, you don't know no better. But when you grow and you see stuff differently and you start maturing, like you said, four, four, four. I bet you that didn't do no no numbers compared to what he's done before when he's talking about gold and jewelry and his cars and whips and his and his Yankee hat like I, I bet you it was different but I, I knew that Jay-Z had the wisdom in him because I can hear certain songs and certain bars that he had I knew he had it I just knew that he probably chose to go the route like he even said it himself like if, if I rhymed like Talib Kweli would I be paid probably not and he knew that he had to get paid to be able to do something but at the same time when I see Dr. Dre who made the chronic Come back and give you now. A now you see now, Ja. Now you pointing fingers because you just said the chronic before. I wanted to know if you was gonna point a finger at Dre, and that's what I need to know. You would even start talking about who is responsible for damaging the integrity of hip hop. You can't just say the album because I knew it had to be Dre. Get into it, buddy. Get into it. <laughs> I just gave you a landmark with that album. I wasn't talking about just the album. Like you can't be mad at that. But it's the same, because again, it's about diversity at the end of the day. You need to have diversity. There's people that actually was smoking chronic and drinking 40s and calling women bitches and hoes and claiming a hood. That was happening. But it was another another um, perspective also in the same demographic. But again, Dr. Dre was the one who, who put that, that project together. Dr. Dre is the one who came with, up with that vision. Now, I can't blame the white man. The white man is just doing what he always do. I can't be mad at a lion if he go bite the shit out mm-hmm. of this gazelle. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. How you get mad at them for that? They don't make nothing new. They, they take everybody else's shit and, and, and make money off of it. You can't be mad at it, but the idiot who gave them their own recipe is the one that I don't like. And that's why I can't, I got to hold you accountable. You made all this money off the, off, the, off the records you made and this genre that you created. You didn't create it, but you blew it up into this whole stratosphere called gangster music or whatever you want to call it that led to all this other stuff. And then when you get paid, you go give it to USC. <sighs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I just don't understand. I can't give you a pass on that, homie. I just can't do that. And, it, and it's certain people that, again, even the Puffies and even the, the Jay-Zs, all the people that made the money in, in this, this, this genre of music called hip hop, there's no reason why you don't have your own distribution. There's no reason. I, I love Jay-Z for making title because he took control of his music and he got other artists to come in there so you don't have to depend on, on iTunes. You don't have to depend on Spotify. Come over here and he pays you the most out of all those things I just named. My question is, did he do that with reasonable doubt? Did he do what? Did he do what? Did he have distribution with reasonable doubt? I think they was independent. I don't know how they got the distribution for reasonable doubt, but I mean, again, at this, at this time, this where he stuff wasn't existing. It took evolution. That was my only point. It took evolution. It took trial and error. It took a clothing line. It took multiple companies. It took a, a, a liquor line. It took a dip set. It took a state property. It took millions and millions of dollars, millions of business moves. It took a, a CEO, it took a Dame Dash, it took a Big Spurk, it took several minds, it took a, a, literally almost a whole generation to get to the point where you are now, to, where you can sit back and say, hmm, now I know what to do. And guess what? 
it's nothing wrong with borrowing from the previous generation because mm. that's what Nipsey did. You know, and he said, wait a minute. I have no excuse as I'm alluding to now to where, right. why am I, st- I know better now. Right. So now I'm going to cut that middleman out. I'm cutting him out the equation and I'm going consumer direct. There's a new business model. So, you okay, know, now. I don't blame the old people who did it they way as long as we learning and progressing. So now when Nipsey said that new president, guess what the next generation is supposed to do? We should see nobody signed to a label now. We should see everybody saying, hey, Nipsey did this. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to sign a dotted line unless they got me such a fair and spectacular deal that it just saved me the time I would take to build my yeah in, a, in addition in addition to that yay yeah, in okay. addition to what you in addition to what you about in addition to that yay uh yeah talk talk about that man talk about that now I hear the evolution argument I hear how artists has to grow but at the cost of what Destroying the minds of all of these young people. That's a lot of responsibility, uh, yay. Don't, don't. Hold up. Let me, let me finish the point. Let me, let, me, let me finish the point. Again, I'm not blaming the child in the situation. The child in the situation is the rapper. I'm putting the accountability on our community that we're not teaching these young black men and women before they go out into the world. That, hey, if you're going to do rap, this is how you need to do it so that it benefits you and your community and future and future generations to come, but not so that they just grab you up and you just all you kicking is is, is destruction, destruction, destruction. And it sets us 15, 20, 30 years back. And now you have to say once you're 50 years old, now I want to lift up the hood. But my music has influenced so many brothers and sisters go to jail, do drugs, sell drugs, gang bang, all of this destructive shit. So that's again, the accountability has to come back to the community that we got to teach the baby. Let's they let's bring it back in this world. Okay. I was going. Let's take it to let's take it to a West Coast uh, um, act because this is. I want to tie this in because Jasia, you know, not only did he bring up the chronic, then he mentioned Dre, right? But let's think about this for a minute. Even with all of that, right? Because I'm ride with Maine right now. Let me go ahead and give you this TDE. You see what's going on over there with TDE? You see what's going on there with P, quality control? Do you see what's going on with these cats? And that also came out of where? Where did that come out of, job? Where did that come out of? Now, K-Dot, K-Dot comes out of that chronic, that Dr. Dre, that can. Now, you telling me you're not fucking with Kendrick Lamar? Are you not fucking with an artist like Kendrick Lamar, brother? He didn't, turn, he didn't mute me? Did y'all mute me? <laughs> <laughs> did he mute me? Hey, John, did you mute me? Oh, this is comedy, man. Um, Kendrick Lamar is a very talented dude, man. I love Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, but again, I could probably name three hot lyricists from this era on three fingers. That's it. But at the end of the day, Kendrick Lamar is dope to me. I just know that when he got with Dr. Dre, he started making different music. So, before that, I loved Kendrick Lamar before he signed with Dr. Dre. I still love pieces and bits of what he puts out now and then, every now and then. Um, I love King Kunta. I love a lot of stuff he does. I love his skill level. Skill level, that boy is off the charts. I, I, hands down, the boy is skillful. Um, I just kind of wish he didn't sign with Dr. Dre, but at the end of the day, you got to eat. Whoever's, whoever's well, offering you the best plate of food, you're going to What about his, I heard you mentioned his talent, skill. But what about his mind, bro? Because I I remember hearing Kendrick, uh, you know, way before his super superstar. This is right around him and Drake when he was beefing with Drake. Uh, well, when he put out the what was the name of that track? He he went out everybody at Drake, Big Sean, and yeah, Control. Right. So now here's the thing, though. I remember hearing him, you know, around that time, talk about how, um, you know, his home. It was it was real modest, a real modest home for a, an, an artist of you know, of you know his 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 um, income base. Yeah, um, it was a real small home, and and his whole thought process behind that was, listen, I'm not caught up with all the motherfucking materialism. Listen, I'm gonna get what I need, and that's about it. So I mean, I hear you talking about his skill, but think about his mindset. 
I'm saying Dr. Dre may have mm. done some things, right, in the past that you could point at and judge him on. But he has a full body of work. And so a lot of these individuals judge him on the full body of work. If 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 if, if Dr. Dre if so, Dr. So, Dre is so, so, the so, same so. guy that damaged the integrity of hip hop through putting out the chronic, also give him credit for lifting Kendrick Lamar up uh in, in this era. That's what I'm saying. You understand? And can I add this? It's, it's two things I said at the it's, it's, it's two things I said at the outset that I, I needed my man to understand if he was going to understand why things are the way that they are. And the two things I mentioned was culture. And the second most mm. important thing I mentioned was business. And we got to understand what hip hop is, a business. So if you're denying that, then you're already lost. You, you follow me? So why don't we call it at times what we call other genres entertainment? Okay. Dr. Dre certainly wasn't living all the things. He actually, Dr. Dre is from my neighborhood. Mm. Dr. Dre is from Athens. You know what I mean? Period. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's entertainment. You know, when Schwarzenegger shoot up a, a, a bunch of people in the movie, that's what we call it entertainment. We take it for face value for what it is. We like the action hero movie, and we move on. We don't say, oh, he's damaging society and blah, 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 blah. We've heard these arguments before. You know, hey, it was art imitating life. Was it what everybody was doing? I don't ever think anybody would say it's what everybody was doing. But enough people was doing it that enough people related to it and brought the music. The, the album went platinum. Somebody was doing it, okay? So he put it out there as a reflection of what was going on where he grew up and what was going on in his neighborhood. And they talked about it. People related to it and they loved it. And it's still a classic to this day. But ultimately, it was business. It was entertainment. So we can't take the... Uh, uh, we can't be so critical on our entertainers and say, well, you know, that could have had a negative. I can turn a negative out of anything. What is the positive? You know, what can I take from it and say, you know, did he gang enough independence to what? Start putting rappers in films. They started to do their own movies like Belly and, you know, not Dr. Dre per se, but, you know, even even the reaching across the aisle relationships. When the East Coast, mm. West Coast view, Dr. Dre went and did albums with Jay Z. Uh, with the firm, you know, the firm with Nas and him. So, 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 uh, so, are we saying? So, are we saying that the Chronic did more positive for hip hop than negative? Is that what we saying? Because I'm not saying. That's a great that. question. I, 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 great question. I'm not saying that. I personally wouldn't um, bookmark or or or. Uh, Make the chronic the focal point of anything. No, 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 the superstar. Oh, okay, but okay. So this is this is folks. Hold on, folks. We here with Jasir Anye Main. We here talking about hip hop then and now. Understanding this is a culture, is it a genre? And we just got into the into this conversation as far as who's accountable. And we were talking about the chronic Dr. Dre. And if this is part of how the integrity of hip hop got damaged. You know, go ahead, listen and tune in. Go ahead, yeah, I'm listening, man. Let's gotta let the people know what's going on, man. If they just tuned in, this shit is good right here. Still, still, I'm making it clear to the people out there. I'm not giving society a pass. I'm not giving the corporations a pass. But I cannot say that the trickle down effects of the chronic, or specifically, why I want to pinpoint it, NWA was good for the black community. In the yes. It was not. It was not. It was not. It was negative. It was negative. It was negative. For because for every Kendrick Lamar, you had a hundred niggas get put in jail. You had a hundred niggas get put in the cemetery, and you had a, a, a bunch of misdirected children out there. Ja, jump in there. I gotta say this is burning my tongue. I gotta say this is burning my tongue, dog. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'm Rockets right now. Like, I feel like I'm Rockets right now. Like no one likes it. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's all good, though. It's all good. It's all good. See, this conversation, I was telling you about this before, bro, uh, on a conversation we had yesterday. Like, man, this, this, this conversation is reminding me of this thing that I came up with, acronym I came up with like a couple months ago called PTHD, right? PTHD stands for Post Traumatic <laughs> Hood Disorder. <laughs> Right. Hey, yo, folks, y'all heard it here right. first. Yeah, y'all see it according to phrase PTHD right. post traumatic hood disorder. You coined it. it. Don't nobody crazy. take that shit. You heard it on the Guru Come Show first. Come with it. Come on. And what I'm saying behind that is that we, we tend to normalize the dysfunction in our neighborhoods, in our community. We're normalizing and actually celebrating the fact that someone made a record that people can go drive by to, smoke weed to, disrespect our women to, do all the things that are degenerate and not productive to our growth in society. A culture is a group of people who have particular things within the group that they live in that they kind of pretty much originate, their food, their music, their art, their 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 uh, uh, contribution to society in general. I don't think it's going to be anything about. But it's, I don't think it's going to be anything about bitches holes and, and weed and drinking. That's yeah. not a culture. I mean, you're wrong. And gang, gang, gang violence in the gang, gang neighborhood, gang uh, groups or whatever you want to call them is not a culture. That's a disorder. That's a dysfunction. <laughs> no one's culture. supposed to roll around killing each other over mm. neighborhoods that your mama paying rent for. We're not talking about. That's right a dysfunction. We're talking about is it a culture? You can have a killing it's not culture. A culture. You can have a it's violent culture. culture. Absolutely, you can. Okay. So why would why would we celebrate that? Please help me understand that. Because that's, that's a PTHD prime example. We're well, celebrating on. the dysfunction. Who who are you proclaiming to have celebrated it? I just think people are acknowledging something that's there. Art imitates life. Because it's happening, you have people talking about it. I mean, is the news celebrating the murder when they go to a murder scene and they show? 300 homes that this seven-year-old girl, I don't think they're celebrating it. I think they're informing you. I think that it, it's just letting you know what's going on. And rap music is no different. That's uh, uh, the reporter of the hood saying, you know, man, this is what we go through. You know, in the hopes that somebody see this and say, okay, but where's the other really stories at? Where are the Why other stories at in the hood? I don't know the good stories at in the hood. What? Where are the good stories at? Where are the good stories at then? Why I think, only I think one they're period? all good stories. You know what? Typically, the good story is the person that come up and, no. and, and accomplish and become successful and become an entrepreneur. And they got a clothing line, a liquor line, a, 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 a whatever, a cologne, a, a, you know, all these other things that teach you oh how to be an entrepreneur so right. and to teach you how to own your own and do your own thing at you know, even when society doesn't give you that Yeah, Ja, Ja, I mean, real quick, uh, uh, I mean, real quick, Ja, if you can't just sit back just a little bit, because I can't, I, I don't have your, uh, yeah, just so I get your full face, because at this point, the the the, the audience has got to be paying attention. I want to make sure they see you, Maine. Um, listen, go ahead, Yay. sound like you want to get into something. Yeah, yeah, cause, 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 cause I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually. It's, it's good, it's good. Things. This shit is good, man. You know, I, yep. I, I, I want to pinpoint a point that Ja made with the lack of diversity. That's big. That's 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 real big in this conversation. And I don't, and I don't hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I don't want us to miss out on. I'm, I'm, I'm cool to an extent. I'm cool with the dude coming out of the hood, just telling that story, and 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 he's coming out legally. But we can't. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, we can't miss the negative influence and the trickle down effects it's of that. And whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. And how the, corporations, how the corporations lift that specific negative artist higher than they They exploit it. We get it. We get the fact that that, that exploit. We understand all of that. Yay, yeah, I... but, but No, no, no. But, but, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm just being critical of that and just saying it. I just can't give that dude all the props because. If, if his effects are more negative than positive, that's detrimental. That's but that's what it is. That's it him. But is it the individual or is no, it? I'm not blaming. That's look, what I'm trying to tell me. you. He's talking about Dr. Dre as if Dr. Dre is the reason mm. that LA was game banging. Or if now, Dr. see, 
Alright, Jack. Because 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 I was but and but but see the thing is I heard something similar. That's why we're gonna have to give Ja opportunity to clear that up. Because what I heard was something similar to what Main was saying. I, I, I that's how, so so clear that up. Go ahead, clear that up. Okay. He said that. Yeah. Let, let me understand. Ask the question one more time. He, what well, what May was saying that you acted as if Dr. Dre was responsible for gang banging in L.A. Right, being that he is reporting, he created an album that reported on what was going on in L.A. Right, and he's being vilified because of it, based on your argument. But Maine Main is saying you acting like he's the one who created gang banging. He's just talking about it. Okay, so he has a song that talks about a murder that happened. You know, around the corner from where you live. Because he talked about it, does that make him responsible for killing that cat? No. Don't make him responsible. So, so the thing is, no. Maine is saying, how are you holding Dr. Dre responsible for that part? When you start talking about handing $250 million to USC, I'm on your side 150%. I'm on your side 150%. It was 70 million? Okay, whatever. But, all right, is his children going there? Conjunction with Jimmy Iovine, it wasn't just from him. It was okay. All right, so you, so basically, with the white man. Who, who, who I, well, I guess, I, I, okay. So I guess okay. he used okay. another, he used um, another uh, black celebrity's name because I don't know exactly how much, how much wealth he actually, you know, pushed over the USC, but he probably had his name on the shit to make it look, to make it look nice for people in our community. But <clears throat> and his kids go there. Why the donation was given because they have students that go there. So makes sense. Going, no, going, going back to the um, am I going back to the whole Dre is, is, is the culprit of this? Here's what I mean, Dr. Dre. Put it this way: I'm one of these people when I go to the, to the grocery store and there's always some kids out in front of the store, right, selling candy for their their basketball team or their football team. <laughs> And I always tell them, I'll say, okay, I'll give y'all some money if y'all can answer three questions for me. Matter of fact, just answer two out of the three questions and I'll still give you some money. And I always ask them questions about people like Marcus Garvey. Uh, ask them questions about people like even Malcolm X or even like uh, Mega Evers or people in the past history, right? And then I always throw in, if it's a basketball kid, I'll throw in like an old school basketball player like a Kareem. They never answer my question. They only answer the basketball question every time. And now, is that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's fault that that kid don't get it and he's chasing the basketball and he don't know who the hell he is? No, it's not his fault. It's the parents' fault. It's society's fault. It's school's fault. It's the people who actually put these athletes in front of these kids to make them aspire to only be an athlete and never think of anything else. Like we but can only do that. So when I say Dr. Dre, when I say Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre was that Michael Jordan to me. Dr. Dre was that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar that made people look at gangsterism as if it was okay. I didn't say he invented it. My cousin got killed in 87. My cousin got killed in 89. My homeboy got killed in 1990 from gang violence. So I know gang violence was, was existing before Dr. Dre ever picked up a DJ term paper. I know it was. I lived it every day. But what he did was when he made the music that he made, he made it glamorized. And he made people aspire to be that more. That's how he sold that many records. It was a hell of a great campaign to sell it from. I'm a, I'm a Michael say Jordan that. made tennis shoes popular. Michael Jordan made tennis shoes hot to sell. Before him, there wasn't very many people selling tennis shoes. So, so, but he so, made it popular. So let me say this. I don't know if you're aware of this, but it was more white kids involved with hip hop than it was shit. black kids. Talk of, wait, the yeah. Do you know the numbers? Man. The numbers tell the truth, man. Hip hop is mainstream. So we. I mean, if you really want to be truthful, go to any NWA concert, Dr. Dre Chronic concert. 
you see in the audience. Let me let me cut it. Let me cut an edge, man. Let me cut an edge, man. We're not even thirteen percent of the population, mm. and yet you want to go into how Dr. Dre is solely responsible or somehow somebody we should demonize for the story the mainstream America. I want my story to get out there so now I can hold them accountable and say, so you gonna tell me y'all didn't know that we was ducking bullets every night? You gonna tell me y'all didn't know? Nigga don't care about that, oh, man. You know, community Dr. going through. don't care about that. It was a Jermaine, Jermaine, Jermaine. And, Jermaine and, and, and I'm not gonna blame the person who bring the message. Okay. Hey. Oh Lord, Jermaine. Jermaine. Let, let, go ahead, yay. May get, may get fired up and I'm fucking with him tonight. I'm fucking with me tonight, boy. Come on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, you're right. Most of the kids that bought the albums that came to the concert, it was white, but. We, hold on, 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 hold on. But, but we ain't white. We black folks. We live in the black Absolutely. community. We live in the black Everyone experience. Does. That's Absolutely. all we give a damn about. It's influence how it trickles down. So yes, ultimately, sir. ultimately, the narrative becomes we have all of these talented individuals in all these different fields, but we got we have nobody behind them guiding them. We have no governing body that says, if you're gonna jump into this field as talented as you are, when you jump into this field, this is how you are going to do it. We don't have that. So these individuals just jump in it, they just jump in it, and they just they just they just go get the money. And see, one of the things that these corporations understand that that, that our people don't understand is you know the, the effect that music has on our people. We we African peoples. Whether you want to believe it, understand it or not, that music affects us different than other people. The way them frequencies, the way them vibrations hit us, you know what I'm saying? When we chilling, when we smoking weed, when it affects us. It affects us. It goes down into our psyche. And it plays out into our actions. So we have to deal with that. that, that Listen, that's a folks, folks, we here with Yay, Jasir, Maine, Hip Hop Then and Now is the title. Folks, we are going over time, so I'm going to have to run into final thoughts. Listen, man, it was getting rough in here for a minute. So let's go ahead and calm it down a little bit and let everybody go ahead and get their final thoughts. I'm going to start with you, man, since you still got a little venom in you. Let me get you go ahead and finish that off, man. Go ahead. How you feel about hip-hop then and now, brother? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Jay-Z had a quote once. He say, how you going to tell me to do something you never did? And I say that to say, you want a governing body to teach them how to do what exactly? So, I mean, these guys got it out the trunk. They made it and credit their own path, not for somebody else to come in and dictate to them on how to do something that they never did. Listen, it's going to be trial and error. It's going to take some time. But I'm willing to let the mistakes be made so that the future generations can come behind them and make better choices. And that's what you see today. That's what you see in your Nipsey. That's what you see in everybody. Somebody that was able to glance back, you know. In fact, I believe Nipsey pointed it out with the death row situation. He said, you seen a game few publicly ending the death. Guess what? He didn't do that. He didn't come out dissing bloods. He didn't come out, you know, with that same type of energy. He came out embracing because he seen from a last generation with Suge Knight in the East Coast and, and the Compton Crips and all this stuff. He didn't take mm. that approach, and guess what? It worked for him. So guess what? Let's not demonize our people for what they didn't know at the time and the resources they didn't have. Only thing we can do now is learn from our mistakes, get the collective and like minds together, and move forward. And, and keep keep advancing, keep keep advancing, not pointing fingers, just saying, hey, this is what we know now. I'm Listen, man, I hate to be better. biased. That's you know, yeah, I don't like to do that biased shit during the final thoughts, man. But yo, yo, man, look, man, you cook it, my bro. You cook it. Yeah, I'm going to let you go ahead and go next because I'm going to give Ja. I think Ja got a couple things to say, so I'm going to leave him for last, man. probably off that chronic right now. <laughs> yay, yay, folks. We here with yay, man. Jasir, uh, hip hop then and now. Final thoughts, yay. Go ahead, finish it up, bro. Hey, 
Hey man, history is its best teacher. We got to learn from history because it seems like we keep making the same mistakes over again and again and again and again. We come from a na from neighborhoods of parentless homes, and that's ultimately what these rappers are are an exemplification of. You know what I'm saying? They are out here without direction. We need to give these rappers of today some type of direction that's not so fucking detrimental for our community so they won't make the same mistakes that rappers did of yesterday because ultimately a lot of it not all of it but a lot of it is very detrimental a lot of it that's in the mainstream and that's pushed towards our people is very detrimental and i want to i want to i want to distill the whole get rid of the whole myth of that it ain't no mcs of today because it's a lot of mcs out there spitting that shit today but because of the way that we're receiving the music today is different than ever before. You know, if you if you don't know to go to your SoundCloud, your Spotify, or if you don't know who these guys are through social media, you won't think there's some spitters out there. But they out there. Oh, look, them. man. Yay. Um, I hear you. Let's get here. Let's. I, I, indeed, bro. Indeed, I'll man. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to I want to know how Ja, how ja wants to end, end, end his final thoughts. For this episode, hip hop, then and now. I said, man, we've been waiting, man. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and finish this off for us, brother. <laughs> First, I want to say thank y'all. Good, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you. Oh, indeed. Anything. You both of y'all. What? Well, listen, listen, folks. Tune in. Oh, uh, well, the business, please, if you guys ever have any traffic ticket services, need driver license issues and all that stuff, go to my website, caticketmasters.com, caticketmasters.com. Or if you want to hear some woke rap, woke music, go to my website called indigenousrhythms.com. All right. All right. Now, that's out the way. Now, so, Q-Tip once said, Rap is not pop if you call it that and stop. I wonder why he said that. I want to know why he said that. Because he probably said that because in that era, it wasn't about trying to be popular. It wasn't about trying to get the dollar bill. It was about the art, the craft of the music, having fun, enjoying yourself, right? You can't have both. You can't have both. You can't have both. That's a part of that's a part of the growth and the evolution y'all keep talking about. At some point, you're going to get tired of having fun and just being an art, and you're going to realize you need to get paid for your art. That's that's a part of the growth. That part I do respect. But as we look into the horizon on this whole thing, man, it's just a dangerous situation that. We again, it's about the PTHD for me. It's just a, it's a it's a it's a disorder that we have within this whole thing. And I'm not here to to, to I'm not here to step on nobody's toes how they get paid. America is the biggest mm. gangsters on planet Earth. Everybody, mm. everybody everybody wants to come here for whatever reason. So again, we learn from the best. But when we create something that we call a culture that we that comes from our soul and our spirit, and we allow it. To get destroyed when it gets destroyed, the only thing we can and then when it gets destroyed, the only thing we can really pull from it is the money that the people are making. I have a problem with that. I respect Jay Z. I respect Dr. Dre to a to a degree. I respect so many different artists that have come and left their mark on this entertainment field through the genre of hip hop. But I can't sit here with blindfolds on and act as if that's okay. Because the one thing that that does, I'm going to tap on something before I leave real quick. It's going to probably piss some more people off, but I don't care. When we talked about Nipsey Hussle, I might want to cover your ears on this one. Mm. I might want to cover your ears on this one. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> when, we talked, when, we, when we talked about Nipsey Hussle, I'll tell you the honest to God truth. I worked with his cousin at some point when he was first coming out. His cousin kept bringing me his tapes, and I was like, who is this dude? And everything he was saying was cuz, cuz, RSC, rolling six. I was like, man, shut that shit off. I don't want to hear that. And I judged him based upon what I heard because for me, that ain't my, that ain't my lane. I don't like to hear that. Right? But as he grew, I started hearing more songs. And when I heard more songs, 
I'm like, okay, the dude, he, he can run, though. He can get down. And then it wasn't until this album, and then it wasn't until this album that he put out last that I was like, this dude is dope. But the problem I had with the whole thing is that he sold it similar to Dr. Dre to where you got so many people wanting to be Crips and all that wit and brains that he had, he used it and infected other people Positively, obviously, because I ain't never seen nobody. I mean, uh, yeah, rest in, peace. rest in peace to the brother, but I don't think he's gonna have a funeral big as Nipsey Hussle, right? I don't think he's gonna have a, I don't think he's gonna, right? he gonna have a funeral big as Nipsey Hussle did. That's, that's, that's monumental, especially in LA. To get people to come out and support you in LA, have a parade around the whole city, like, bro, you have to work like LA, do that. So he did infect people positively, that's obvious. But my goal, even with the Dr. Dre, is to who did you impregnate with the poison <coughs> of negativity that got people wanting to join gangs and kill each other? That's my thing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I can blame you. I can blame the industry who signed you, who gave you the platform to do so. I, we can blame all kinds of people, but the person who actually recorded the music mm. is the main blame. That's the person who's to blame because you are the one who wrote it, who created it, made the beat, and solicited artists and put this together. You are the person who did that. You took your pie to the other person. I can't be mad at the person for seeing profit in that and taking from it and making profit with you, if not more than you probably did, make more than you offer. So, in the closing, hip hop, I hope it gets better. Everything goes in a circle and it comes full circle eventually. I hope it gets better. I hope one day I want to see a, a conscious artist come out with something, a conscious product, and everybody go buys it and he gets rich and he can see this family. I want to see that balance. I just don't want to see the negative balance of people creating this PTHD situation where they got people just, just in disorder, but they they rich on top of the hill, but the people on the, on the bottom of the hill are broke listening to you. Where is the balance? That's all I want to see is the balance come back to hip hop. After that, we good. You know, uh, Ja, man, just sitting there listening to you, man. I, I, I mean, I, I get it, man. Believe me, I get it. I absolutely do get it. Um, uh, you guys are familiar with uh, Doctor Boyce Watkins, uh, Mike, Michael Eric Dyson. You yes, familiar with those two brothers? Really intelligent brothers. Really intelligent. Yeah melanated brothers right uh some years back the two of them had a Mm -hmm. uh this is for you folks if you guys didn't know Uh, a few years back they had a debate and it was about hip-hop and uh dr voice Watkins was on the side of uh being against hip-hop and michael eric dyson was on the side for uh you know a lot of the stuff that you hear jacia mention was some of the things that voice Watkins. I was repeating, but the interesting thing about Michael Eric Dice's point is he was able to see the brilliance in hip hop, in spite of all the negativity. He would point to your Nas, he would point to your Jay Z, and actually quote lyrics from songs uh, that these that these that these men have put out, which tells you, uh, especially a lot of these songs, these one these these mainstream shits that you heard on Hot ninety seven and then whatever radio stations you got. In your city, this is stuff that's album cuts, which means you have to really listen to this artist to hear these lyrics. And Michael Eric Dyson uh, was 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 repeating a lot of this stuff from Nas, from Jay Z, which which says to me that if a cat from his walk of life, because he's a scholar, right? If he can find the beauty mm-hmm. in hip hop, despite all the negativity. That's the shit that I want the majority of us to do. Because we know um, through ignorance, a lot of us have done some fucked up shit that's attached to this music business. Uh, but if you think about, since we're talking about, you know, L.A., and that's where you guys are from, watch the Vlad interview with uh, Big U. Now, I don't really know about his history, but one of the things that he mentioned in that interview was how, uh, you know, he and individuals like him were credited with uh, all the negativity surrounding the, the gang violence uh, coming up through the 80s. Um, and he said now, 
apparently, you know, you guys can, can confirm or not that the murder rate in L.A. had been low, had been the lowest it had been since like the 60s or something like that. So he wanted the people to credit him for that as well. He mm-hmm. credit him for the negativity um, and how he, you know, his contribution to causing uh, the stuff with the gang culture. Also credit him for the fact that he's trying to change the shit. And I think that's, and I think, and that's, that's what I think the, the message should be here. Um, but folks, you guys take what you take from it. A lot of shit happened today. Y'all dissect it. Y'all pick sides, choose sides, jump in the comments. Let us know how you feel. We had a dynamite show. Jazir, Maine, got my man Anye. Folks, make sure you check out that YouTube.com slash reality Google show. Consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell notification. I don't want no more DMs of people telling me y'all missed the show. Hit the bell notification so you can see that shit because we're not responsible. I'm G. Cleave. Reality Gurus. Take care. Young nigga, I cannot lose. I'ma keep grinding till I get some Jimmy Choo. Don't gotta worry about it, just know.